Hello everyone. Thanks for letting me give you this ASCOM and Alpaca briefing. This will be in three parts. First I'm going to show you a little bit about why ASCOM even came into being. Secondly, I'm going to give you some specifics about Alpaca and why we are making that available to people now. Then at the end of this short video, it'll be open for question and answer. And actually, this is where I enjoy myself and you'll learn the most. So sit tight. The video will be over in just a few minutes and we'll talk more then. By the way, thanks to Matt Dietrich for that wonderful Nightscape time lapse. First thing we're going to go through is really why ASCOM and Alpaca exist in the first place. It won't take long. You guys are all developers, so I'm not going to belabor all of this. But as you know, without a common universal interface, you have to write adapter code for every single type of device out there. So if you were doing this, you'd have your own code to talk to mount A, B, C, and D. In other words, how many of these mount adapters must I write and support? Here's an example. This is Sky Safari 7. And we'll go in to connect up a mount the old way. And look at this list of mounts. These people had to develop code for every one of these mounts. So prospective app developers look at this and they see it as a big barrier to them getting into the business. But it's worse. Suppose a new mount comes out. Now the app developers are faced with writing code and testing with a new mount. Do they put that mount in their warehouse of all the other mounts that they have so they can test with it in the future? Do they borrow one? How do they get this thing? Once they have the support there, they have to roll out a new version of their app. It's a tough row. From the mount maker's point of view, as soon as you have a new mount, you have a choice. You can either try to emulate somebody else's gobbledygook along the serial line, or you have to go back to the app developers and beg them to support your new mount with your new protocol. All this adds up to problems for both the app and the mount developers, but here's the thing most people forget. When you have pieces of code in the app and pieces in the device, who's responsible for a problem when somebody has a problem? Trying to figure out whether it's the app's code or the mount or whatever device's code is a real problem. So you end up with a situation like this, and eventually you end up with a situation sort of like this. What we're here to do is put everyone on a common universal standard. An app need only write mount code once. A mount maker need only write a driver, and it's automatically compatible with all the apps out there. And when you're trying to solve a problem, where is it in the app or the driver? By having a universal standard, it makes it easy to find out whether it's in the app or in the uh, driver. Okay. Let's switch gears and look at a little bit of layering and architecture. Before I go farther, I want to say that this is being presented in an evolutionary way, starting with the original classic ASCOM and working our way towards the future. By its nature, this stuff starts with Windows-centric things. That does not mean that Alpaca depends on Windows. It does not. This is what we know of as ASCOM has been for the last 20 plus years. Windows apps talk to a Windows driver and the two communicate with COM. That's what we would call classic ASCOM or ASCOM COM. And then the driver talks over something like USB or Ethernet serial or whatever to the actual device hardware. Now, with the introduction of Alpaca, we have the possibility of an unmodified Windows COM application being able to reach out to an Alpaca device by having these new chooser dynamic drivers. Let me show you what that looks like. When the Windows app decides to display the chooser, it comes up and looks up for Alpaca devices anywhere on the net. If it finds one, there it is. You simply choose that. Click OK to have it create the new driver for you. Mind you, this is a COM driver that gives access to the Alpaca device. It makes that permanent on the device. Boom, there it is, Alpaca Telescope Simulator. You'll hear more of that in our next presentation. At this point, an unmodified Windows app with, that speaks COM-flavored 
ASCOM can talk to an Alpaca device out on the network with no changes to the Windows app at all. Now let's look at the flip side of this. Let's say we have an application out on Linux or Mac OS or iOS, as you'll see in a minute, that wants to speak to a mount that is running on a driver, on a COM driver on a Windows system. And there's lots of them out there, EQ mod, plain wave, whatever. Well, we also provide an inbound route from Alpaca back into Windows through ASCOM Remote. Let's take a look at what that might look like from uh, Sky Safari on the iOS, and we'll have it talk to the ASCOM COM platform telescope simulator. In Sky Safari, you would just select the settings and go in and add a new preset. And this time it's Alpaca and we discover. So Sky Safari found the telescope simulator, the COM one on the Windows system. And we've go ahead and save that. Go back to Sky Safari. Use that preset. And the next thing we know, boom, we can connect. And that is there we are. That's now talking to a, a mount that is being controlled on a Windows system. In this case, it's the simulator that uh, um, is part of the ASCOM platform. I didn't want to use a specific mount. We don't, you know, we try to keep this neutral as far as vendors are concerned. But again, because the simulator acts exactly the same as any other ASCOM mount, it wouldn't, doesn't really matter. Okay. Let's look at one more Windows involved uh, possibility here, and that would be a Windows app that, spe that speaks Alpaca natively, and then an Alpaca driver running on uh, the Windows system. This is the same layering as we uh, the original COM one that we looked at at first, only instead of using COM for the communication, it uses Alpaca. Here we see the same thing with a Linux app running on a Linux machine with a Linux driver, an Alpaca driver, using Alpaca to speak between the app and the driver. This is the same Windows or Linux, and we can do that on Mac. Because Alpaca is cross-platform, it is a universal truly now, even across operating systems. Now let's look at one more possibility, and that is the app on Linux, Mac, or Windows, which speaks Alpaca, the same app that would it would uh, be in the last three slides, now can speak out over the network to a self-contained device. And that's really where we see the future in the long term. And that is devices that are out there on Ethernet or Wi-Fi and no more USB, no more private protocol that you saw over USB or Wi-Fi, serial line, blah, blah, whatever that stuff was. That's all in a, in the orange box at the bottom and how that happens is not for us to worry about. All we need to do is speak to the um, Alpaca REST internet endpoints out there that have that common interface and that's all we need to run the device. Okay, wrapping up here, I hope this diagram will help you imagine the possibilities with ASCOM and Alpaca. And we're here today to help you try to understand this and ask questions and uh, clarify the things that I didn't clarify in this video. Okay, thanks a lot for listening to all of this. I'm hoping it'll put things into perspective and that you'll have plenty of questions for me now. So we'll get to that part next.